What's going on guys, Balkan Arctic here, and in today's tutorial we're going to be talking about ceilings in Revit. So the topic of today's tutorial is going to be how to create a coffered ceiling in Revit. So this is this uh, old school uh, style of ceilings. Uh, it's common in kind of classical buildings, classical architecture. Uh, it basically divides the, the, the ceiling into segments. It looks like some sort of a construction, but from what I know it doesn't really it, it isn't really beams and beam systems, it's just an aesthetic part of the ceiling. Uh, now, you might need this either if you're reconstructing an old building or in case that perhaps you are uh, working on a project where the client wants to have some something like that old school uh, ceiling effect uh, in their, on their ceiling. So that's what I'm going to be showing you in today's video. And uh, I kind of searched a little bit to find the most efficient way of creating this, something like this. And I think I found uh, a way which can be recreated uh, many times uh, easily and it's supposed to save time in the long run. So that's the uh, th that's uh, the approach that I'm going to be showing you. But of course, if you have your own approach and you think it's better, uh, please tell me in the comment section below the video. Also, before we get into the video, make sure to subscribe. I make useful Revit tutorials each week and also make sure to like this video. It helps me out a lot. And if you're looking for some courses, either a complete beginner to intermediate level course or any other intermediate or advanced level course, I have lots of many different courses on my website, balkanarctic.com. The link is going to be the first link just below the video, so make sure to check it out. Also, if you would be interested in my Revit project files for all these tutorials, uh, all of my Revit project files are available on my Patreon page. That is going to be the second link in the description, so check it out if you're interested. Okay, so without any further ado, let's get straight into Revit. And here we are in Revit. So let's immediately get started by going here to models and then going to new. And for the template file, I'm going to choose my own personal Balkan Architect template, the metric version. And if you're interested in getting either of my templates, they're both available on my website. The third link in the description will take you to it. It's on balkanarchitect.com. Okay, anyways, let's now just click OK and get started with creating uh, this coffered ceiling. So uh, as soon as Revit starts up, I'm going to start off by first creating the room. So I'm just going to use the walls here, uh, choose the, the rectangle tool, and then let's create some simple layout, something like six by six meters. I think that's perfect for this uh, particular situation. Next, uh, for our coffered ceiling, we have to start off with a regular ceiling. So just go here to ceiling, and maybe go uh, to the project browser and go to ceiling plans instead of floor plans, just like that. And then let's go here to ceiling. And for the height offset, let's pick out three meters, hit enter. And then uh, you can use the automatic ceiling option. It's fairly simple and straightforward. You're just gonna click and that's it. Hit the escape key a couple of times and uh, now we have our ceiling. We can open up the 3D view to preview that, maybe turn off 10 lines, there we go. So here we have our regular basic generic ceiling. Now I like to add thickness to the ceiling because the generic ceiling is well just that, it's generic, it doesn't really have any thickness. So I'm going to choose the plain ceiling and as you can see now it has proper thickness. Now to create the, that coffered effect, uh, what we're going to be using is, uh, an, as I said, an automated method uh, the, that I kind of developed and it's my uh, it's my, my idea for the fastest approach. And of course, if you have any uh, different ideas, maybe how to do this more efficient, quicker, uh, please tell me uh, in the comment section below. Uh, but anyways, what we're going to be using to create this ceiling is going to be a roof, not just any roof. Uh, let's place it here on level two, but it's actually going to be a sloped glazing roof. So you want to go here to sloped glazing. We can pick out the walls just like this. There we go. Hit the escape key a couple of times. Okay, it seems to be on the outside. So let's flip it towards the inside just like that. Now we can select all of these lines and uncheck the finest slope, making this a flat roof. Hit finish, and there we go, we have a simple roof. Now what I'm going to be uh, doing is using the uh, sloped glazing or using the, uh, the, the sloped glazing system family in order to host these uh, coffered ceiling elements 
as mullions. This is going to allow me to have the versatility to uh, to uh, kind of apply the the the, the, the methods of uh, or, or the distance between these elements and so on. So I think this will give us the most versatility. Now, of course, we have to create those profiles as mullions, and for that, we'll have to create a couple of families. So let's then go here into File, uh, go to New, and then let's go to Family. Uh, for the family template, what you want to do is scroll down and find profiles, and here we have the Malian profile. Hit open, and there we go. Uh, now for this profile, what you want to do is use simple lines, and what I like to do is just go like this. Perhaps let's start off with, I don't know, like 50 millimeters, go up a little bit, then go off to the side. 10 millimeters, go down a little bit and go just like that. Hit the escape key a couple of times. Uh, now these lines are, are a bit thick, so let's go here to 10 lines and turn that on. Perfect. Now uh, let's go to create and go to line again. And again, I'm going to pick out a line, go to here, go out a little bit, then switch to the arc tool, go like this at 135, just like that, making it that little kind of classical shape and then let's finish off like this. Hit the escape key a couple of times. Uh, now, of course, we want to kind of close this off. So you want to go here to create line and then maybe follow this line like that, then go up and then go off to the side and close it off here. This, let's just round it off at 10 millimeters. This is already at 10 millimeters, perfect. And of course, we just need to use the trim and extend tool over here to fix this corner up here and here as well. Perfect. So we have half of our coffered ceiling profile. And what I'm going to do is just save this. So let's go here to the save button and let's save it here on my documents and call this one the, uh, the coffered profile. And let's add like this half and hit save. Now, uh, the next thing that I'm going to do is select the whole thing, go to mirror and use the pick access option, mirror it around the center axis, and then I'm just going to delete all of these lines in the middle. Perfect. So now we have the full element, the full profile. So you want to go here to file, save as family, and this is just going to be the same name, but here, uh, let's just call it the full hit enter, and there we go, perfect. So once we have created this, uh, the next step is going to be uh, loading both of these families into the project. So uh, let's go and just close this off for now, go to the project, uh, go here to the insert tab uh, on the ribbon, uh, go to load family, and we can go here to our documents and just select both of these and open them up. Now, to include these as mullions, it's not uh, as simple as just loading in the family. You have to actually assign that family in the project browser. So what you want to do is scroll down here. Once you can find families, expand that. Scroll down and find curtain volume, wall mullions. Expand that. And we can use any of these categories as we want. I'm just going to go with the rectangular one expand that, right click, and we have the new type option. So let's create a new type, which is going to be the coffered full. There we go. And you can double click to open up the type properties. And here for the profile, you just want to assign that. Let's find it. Here we go. The uh, coffered ceiling profile full. Click OK. Now I'm just going to right click here and duplicate this one. And let's call this one the half. There we go. And for this one, let's choose the half one. Click OK. So the half one is going to go over here in the corners, and then the full one is going to follow the length. Now, one problem that we have uh, with using sloped glazing is uh, whenever you have mullions, and let me show you that, perhaps with a wall that's going to be a bit easier. So whenever you have like a storefront wall like this, one mullion is always going to break to let the other mullion go through, which is perfectly fine for uh, the, these types of mullions. But if we had that with our classical, uh, cl classically shaped uh, 
uh, coffered ceiling profile while the we're going to have a gap here at the profile joins so we actually want to have both of these go through uh, it's not a hundred percent correct but it does look as uh, but it does look correctly so that's exactly the effect we want to achieve so uh, let's now delete this as we don't really need that so what we're going to be doing is creating two sloped uh, sloped glazing types for our ceiling and one is going to go in one direction and the other one is going to go in the other direction so uh, let's select the ceiling and then go here into edit type let's duplicate this one and call it the coffered coffered ceiling one click OK uh, for the curtain panel instead of none switch that to empty making it an empty panel so no glass will be applied uh, next let's go with grid one for this one so you, you want to set it to grid one give it maximum spacing of maybe 1.5 or maybe let's go with 1.2 okay uh, next you want to move down here to grid one mullions and then for the interior type you want to use the full one so the coffered full and then for the border types you want to use the coffered half as they're going to be located in the corners or in the borders again up against the wall click OK and this is what we get now this looks really good but of course it's upside down and you don't want that so we have to flip these around so what you have to do is go back here to the profile find the coffered full and let's see what can we do so currently this is perpendicular to face so let's make it parallel to the ground it's going to kind of rotate by 90 degrees and then let's give it an angle of 90 degrees let's see what happens okay it went back up so let's try minus 90 hit apply perfect now it's facing down now you might be thinking well why haven't I just uh, typed in here 180 well let me show you that on the coffered half if I type in here 180 and hit apply well we're going to get an error message telling us that well it has to be either minus 90 up to 90 but we can't go past that so anyways here for the uh, for the uh, coffered half for the ones on the edge uh, let's make that here position parallel to the ground as well click OK let's see is this correct now okay this one seems to be correct now which is perfect because I don't have to do it again okay uh, anyways now to make it to, to adjust it here to the uh, to our ceiling uh, perhaps it would be best to move to level one and then create a section so this is the level one ceiling plan so uh, let's open up that section here we go and then let's just measure from this uh, roof well it's considered a roof down to this ceiling so for that let's use the measure tool and then let's go from here to here it's 0.6 so we can just select this and give it a oops give it a minus 0.6 meter offset and now as you can see this looks perfect and it's just up against that uh, ceiling uh, now of course let's select the let's create the second one so let's go back to the 3d view go to roof or level two use the pick walls I'm just going to do this a bit quicker as we kind of covered everything so let's select all of these uncheck define slope uh, go here and make sure that it's the let's go to sloped ceiling now let's go into edit type duplicate this one uh, let's call this one the uh, let's see so we have the coffered ceiling one let's yeah let's duplicate this one and call it the coffered coffered ceiling two okay so for this one uh, again it's the same story for construction so the curtain panel is going to be the empty system panel uh, next for grid one we're going to leave that one empty but for grid two let's apply the same layout uh, rule which is maximum spacing with 1.2 meters uh, spacing in between these and then for the grid two mullions let's add the full one here and then the half one here on the edge and the same thing goes here for the second border click OK and this is what we get so now you also want to select this give it a minus 0.6 meter offset and now if I just delete one of these walls and take a look this is what we have now this uh, I just I just found that it looks perfect if you go here to visual style graphic display options and just uncheck show edges hit apply 
as you can see it looks really perfect and as I said this is really versatile because you can select uh, both of these or one of these and then go here into edit type and change this to a smaller spacing and now as you can see it can look like this so uh, you don't have to kind of repeat everything uh, and uh, if you create these uh, it's really good because you can then reuse them in future projects and if you're par part of my patreon page uh, you already have access to these files because I upload project files for all of my tutorials on my patreon page so that's where all of this is going to be located okay so that's pretty much it for this tutorial i hope it was interesting and fun to learn uh, and uh, tell me in the comment section below do you like this approach do you have a better approach uh, maybe something that i haven't heard of so far uh, and so on so uh, please make sure to uh, tell me that in the comments also, make sure to like and share this video. It helps me out a lot. Make sure to subscribe for more useful Revit tutorials. And if you're interested in some more uh, in some more longer content where I take the extra time to go in depth in beginner, intermediate, as well as advanced Revit topics, for that, check out my website, VulcanArctic.com. That's going to be the first link in the description. Okay, so that's pretty much it for this tutorial. Thank you for watching, and I'll be back in a couple of days with another tutorial. Have a nice day.